Emmanuel Velikovsky believed that the planet Saturn was once very near the Earth. So near, in fact, that when the giant planet exploded as a nova, water and or hydrogen from the explosion enveloped the Earth, causing the flood of Noah. According to Velikovsky, Earth was likely a satellite of Saturn. Dave Talbot and Wal Thornhill, following Velikovsky's lead, have reconstructed what they call the polar configuration from the mytho-historical record. Talbot and Thornhill believe that there was once a congregation of planets at the Earth's North Pole. In this reconstruction, Mars, Venus, Saturn, and perhaps Jupiter were aligned along Earth's axis. Just a few thousand years ago, our ancestors witnessed a gathering of planets close to the Earth. In the beginning, the gathered powers were not seen as separate gods, but as the primeval unity of heaven, the perfect conjunction, or great conjunction of the golden age. One simple truth will change the future of science and our understanding of human history. The ancient sky bore no resemblance to the sky we see today. At times, there were plasma discharges between the planets called Birkeland currents. This formation was known as the cosmic thunderbolt. Earthbound viewers could see the alignment with the discharges due to its occasional displacement along the axis. The idea of a conjunction of planets is not new with Talbot and Thornhill. It is ancient and widespread. The best scientists of France at the time of the Black Death, citing Aristotle, believed the disaster was caused by a conjunction of planets. The Roman poet Virgil knew of an ancient alignment of planets. Virgil announced the return of the Golden Age, introduced by the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, that is, the Star of Bethlehem, in his famous Fourth Ecologue. Other civilizations, such as the Hindus, Arabs, and Chinese, talked about conjunctions of the planets, linking them with the beginning and end of ages and the changes of rulers. Today, we think of a conjunction of planets only in the sense of two or more planets in a general sector of space. But the ancients were explicit that this conjunction was a close alignment of planets along a straight line or axis. Mainstream science objects to the notion that planets can align along a rotational axis as proposed by Talbot and Thornhill. Of course, this is true in a Newtonian universe where gravity is the only force. However, we live in a universe largely governed by electricity. Electricity, a force orders of magnitude stronger than gravity, flows along linear patterns or transmission lines. Therefore, it is not surprising to find that stars and planets are aligned in a similar fashion. 
Science now knows that stars and planets are formed as Herbig Harrow objects, where newly created stars and planets are aligned along the rotational axis exactly as claimed by Talbot, Thornhill, and the ancients. <laughs>